Hi Final Cut Pro users, I'm Brett Williams from BrettFX.com and in this tutorial I want to show you how to create animated text in Final Cut Pro 10 without using plugins, without using keyframes. So you can create great text animations like you see on the screen right here. I literally made these uh, in a few minutes using one tool in Final Cut Pro 10 that's often overlooked. It's really cool. It's the custom text tool. You can find it in the titles browser under build in and out. All right, so let's dig in and see what we can accomplish. I'm just gonna drag the custom text to the timeline. So the custom text tool has all the same stylizing options, exactly the same as your basic title. And in fact, it doesn't have any animation. If you hit play on it right now, by default, it works just like the basic title. You could use it instead of the basic title all day long, just in case you wanted to animate something later. But if you look here under the little, uh, the little T in the inspector, you'll see all of these great parameters. And every one of these is just a quick and easy animation parameter. I'm going to double click at the top here, as there's so many of them. I want to make it kind of fill the screen. It's a neat trick. You can double click the top of the inspector to give it a full height. So I think the best way to go about this tutorial is to run you through some of the basics with some of these parameters, uh, let you in on a few of the more advanced parameters. But you can really get up and going really quick just by playing with a few of these. So to speed things up, I could go in here and type out you know, a couple lines of text in the title, but I've already built one. This is the custom title here. I just went in and stylized a few lines of text. There's no animation going on. I haven't played with any of these parameters yet. They're all set to their presets. So the custom text effect by default animates your text in, and that's these top half of the controls, the in tracking, in position, in speed. And then the exact same controls exist for the out animation. And by default, nothing happens. They're all set to 100%, zero, scale to 100%. But the minute you go in, I've got my playhead at the beginning of our title. The minute you go in and change, say, the opacity slider to zero, you saw all the text go. If I hit play now, you automatically get some in animation. So all these apply to the in animation side of the effect. So you say, well, that's neat, but I really didn't want every letter. By default, each letter animates individually. Maybe I want each word to fade up individually. So that's the next thing you really want to look at. It's the in unit size. Right now, it's set to character. You see it here? Um, if you want to make it word, you can go down to word. So now let's see what happens as we fade it all in. Now each word is fading in. But perhaps I don't want in and Final Cut Pro 10 fading in separately. Well, we can change from word to line. And now each line fades in by themselves. All right, so that's great. But what if I want them to slide in from the right? I'm going to set the opacity back to 100 and put my playhead at the beginning of our title here so I can see it. And you can adjust the X, the Y, and the Z for the position. For right now, I'm just going to take the X, click on it, and drag to the right and slide this whole thing off the screen. So that's going to say, well, that's the beginning of my animation. The in is going to come from off the screen on. And we still have it set to line. Why don't we go ahead and change this to word? So now when you play it back, each word slides in from the right. And that looks pretty slick. We've really changed one setting, maybe two, if we change it from letter to word. And we've changed a position parameter. And you immediately have three lines of text animating. How fast is that? We're doing it with one effect that if you want to change the speed or the way it animates, we can now just change a few parameters. So let's look at some of those. Say we don't like the speed. It seems a little 
slow. If you go, let's close up position. If you go down here to duration, this is 40 by default, and I don't claim to know if that means 40 frames, 40% or what, but if I want it to be faster, I would shorten it, but if I think it's a little too fast right now, maybe I'll drag it up to 50, and we'll take a look at how that works. Yep, just a little bit slower. Maybe I want it a little bit faster. Let's take it over to 30. That's good. Maybe I don't want each word to come on by themselves. Maybe I want text to come on uh, after animates about halfway on. So I want, say, two words in motion at once. If you look at what's called the in spread right here, it's set to one. That means whatever you have the unit size set to, word or character or line, that's how many of those objects are going to be in motion at a time. They're still going in order. Let's say if you set it up to two, you know, text will start to come on when animates about halfway on. And so on. Animate will once animate has stopped and text is halfway on, the word in will start to come on. And once text hits, you see there's so there's two things in motion at a time. That's all that spread uh, slider means. Um, if I wanted to make it four, you kind of have like a nice little smoother effect. So you can just play with these parameters and see just exactly you know what works for you. Um, one of my favorites here for sliding things on is this blur parameter. I'm going to slide the spread back to 1 so we get a full effect. If you put this at 0, by the way, they just cut on. They don't animate or anything. They just go boom, boom, boom. See? So that can be an effect, too. All right, but jumping back, uh, this blur parameter. You can actually fake some great motion blur with this blur parameter. Since we're sliding right to left, let's just blur... I'm going to go ahead and slide these, uh, put them kind of it's snapping on. Uh, let me put them in motion like that. We can see the in. Um, let's give it some blur here. It goes up to 10. That's probably not enough. If you click on the number and go up, you can just you can get more blur. We'll get it pretty exaggerated here. And so what's going to happen is as the word comes in, uh, the blur is going to get less and less and less until it goes there. So kind of mimicking uh, motion blur. And I can see them now because of the blur off the edge of the screen. So I'm going to drop our opacity to zero. It's subtle, but you can see while they're animating in, they start off really blurry like they're moving really fast. And then when they hit, they got no blur. You can even bring it up a little more if you wanted to. Yeah, I like that. Kind of over-exaggerated blur. And if you notice, they're not really easing into place. They're just kind of hitting. It's a linear animation. You have some control over that in Final Cut, not as much as you do in motion. Um, this in speed parameter is set to constant. That's a linear animation. Everything's just moving at the same speed. Um, you can choose something like decelerate, um, but I'll tell you now, it doesn't affect each word. Um, each word doesn't decelerate into place. The whole animation as a whole kind of slows down as it goes. So the first one will be fast, the next one will be a little slower, a little slower, and then this one, final FCP 10, will be really slow. So you have to kind of play with that and get what works for you. Yeah, we've got it going so fast, it's really exaggerated, too. So that might be too much, but if you change the spread a little bit, these are just tips, um, it would look a little better. Kind of gives you more of a, yep, gives it a little style. Okay, so let's jump over to a horizontal text right here that um, is totally, I haven't added any animation to it. This is just another example of the custom text effect. And what I want to show you is maybe how scale parameters work here. Without changing any parameters, let's just drop the scale to zero. I've got it at the beginning of the clip. 
and let's change our unit size to word. So we think, well, okay, we're going to animate each word like we showed in the other example, except really what's happening in this is all these parameters are really affecting groups of letters. It's always individual letters. It's, it's different in Apple Motion, but in Final Cut Pro, that's kind of a limitation. So if you're scaling, the easiest way is just to show you. Unless, unless I'm missing something, it always, all the letters kind of scale individually like this. Now we've chosen word as our unit size. So if I scale it down and hit play, each word animates up individually, but you're getting that, you know, that it's not really adding it up as a full word, like scaling up as a full word. It's scaling up as a bunch, as a group of individual letters scaling up. So they have that little space in between, which is a pretty cool effect into itself, and we can play with that. Let's, um, I'll put it almost at the beginning so we can see what we're doing. This is where you could add rotation to your animation. Let me see if I just say ro add some rotation here. Um, let's change the spread to say where we're animating. In fact, let's change it to character. So we're going to have it almost type on with a little bit of rotation. We'll make it fade in. Sorry if we go a little too fast here. There's a lot of stuff to cover, so... Use that pause button and that rewind button. Um, so we've got some rotation. We've got some scale. And it's fading in. So see if this is what you think it would look like. Ah, way too fast. <laughs> we need to change our spread instead of one letter at a time. Because if you set the duration to 40... That's the duration, whether it's one word, all the words, all the letters. So we can slow it down, and we can have more than one letter animate on it once. So maybe 10. So usually when you're doing character by character, you don't want it one at a time. You want it to kind of come in as sort of a wave pattern. Another thing we can do is we can change the position. Um, let's have those letters kind of fly in from down below. So I will change the position. So I'm going to drop the Y position down really low. I'm just clicking and dragging. You can't really see it because I'm not at the beginning of the animation. I'm sorry about that. So we're dropping this Y position way down low. So they're going to, maybe they can come out of even the bottom of the screen. You know, I don't know. And just kind of spew up. There we go. If you really want the words to scale up individually, my little hack is to reset the scale here, and let's reset the position. I'll turn the opacity back up so that we can see what we're doing. I don't need the rotation. Let's reset that. And I want it to animate word by word. I want them to zoom up, so I'm going to set this back to word. I think essentially I've reset the whole thing there. I'll just reset the whole thing. If you want it to really be individual words scaling up, we're going to use the position parameter. And we can use our Z space. So not left, right, but depth. And I can drag this, click and drag to where the text is going way back here, way back in Z space. Okay, and now that I kind of say that's about the size I want, now I can drag the opacity down to zero, and I can set the unit size to word, and let it rip. Kind of slow, to make the duration a little quicker. A little. But you can see just how quick you can come up with some animation. So make it a little longer, and you can tweak these things all day. All right, so we like that. I want to do an out animation. I want it to just fly forward. So you've got all the same controls on the outside here, on the out animation. 
So I want this to zoom up and I want it to zoom, you know, right past my face, right past the camera. Uh, first, let's change our unit size to, uh, it can either be all or line. Either one's going to work because I want the whole thing to zoom past me. Um, I'm not going to play with scale. I'm going to play with the, uh, I'm going to play with the out position, the Z position. I'm going to click and just drag it forward. Yep, until this blue. Let's take it right past me. So now, if we hit play from the middle here, there you go. It zoomed right past my face. Um, so if you want to smooth this out a little bit, maybe we uh, adjust the out opacity to zero so it kind of fades out as it comes towards you. So let's see what we've got. Each word zooms up, and then the whole thing zooms past me. And so you can see just how much fun you can have with this. You can really just tweak it all day. You haven't created any keyframes, so when your client says, hmm, can we make it slide off? Man, you just take reset the position. I'm sorry, you reset yeah, the out position. Reset that Z. Take the X. Move it way over here to the left. And like we did earlier, you could add some blur. Let's change the out duration to make it quicker. And we can change this constant to accelerate. There you go. So you get the idea. All right, so I lied. I said there wouldn't be any keyframing. There is an advanced technique you can use, and I used it in two of them in the intro to give a sort of a uh, overshoot kind of text, kind of a look. Uh, you might have noticed here in the end sequencing, there is a keyframe option from keyframes. So I'm going to reset this whole effect and show you guys how you can recreate sort of an overshoot look. That's where it kind of zooms past a point back, kind of like a rubber band effect. So to accomplish that, let's reset this whole panel. We're going to set a few keyframes. We're going to go back to our Z parameter. And let's make sure we're doing word by word. So set it to word because it reset to character. Let's zoom this pretty far back. All right, so we zoomed it back to, let's make it negative 350 in Z space. Okay, and we're going to set a keyframe right there at the beginning of our custom text effect. Okay, and I'm going to go into the timeline and go ahead, say, 10 frames. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you can already see the word animating. I'm going to set another keyframe for that Z right there. And if you're new to keyframing, you'll probably want to come down here to the timeline and press Control V to show the animation timeline for your clip to better visualize what's going on here. All right. So back up in the inspector and over to the Z parameter. And let's make it go past zero into the positive to about 100. And you can't at this point really look at what's going on in the viewer um, because you've told it to an it's still animating not from keyframes so I need to change that. Let's change it to from keyframes so now it knows what I want it to do. Alright so we set a keyframe back here I'm going to click the arrow to go to the next keyframe, which is 100, which is a little bit bigger. And it's not really showing you that keyframe right here because it's still based on where I'm parked and in the middle of the animation. So it's, it's kind of hard to see what's going on until you finish your keyframes. All right, so we're 10 frames in. I'm going to go in 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Another 10 frames in and set another keyframe. And I want that to be a little smaller than zero, back into the negative. Let's say negative 
I don't know, 75. So it doesn't bounce back quite as far. And then we're going to set one more keyframe. I'm going to go back into the timeline, go another 10 frames ahead. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we'll just go ahead and set that to 0. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to play it. You see, they each have kind of a bouncy effect. So what we did to accomplish this is we set four keyframes on the Z parameter. And we've got it set to word. And in sequencing is set to from keyframes. And you say, well, I see all the words here at the beginning. Well, now we can simply jump to the beginning of our text effect. I'm going to set a keyframe for opacity. Um, and we can bring that down to zero. Go back to the timeline and go ahead, you know, five frames, just, just so it has a little bit of a fade up. And bring the opacity up to 100, and it makes a keyframe for you once you've started the keyframing. So now we'll see the words individually. And they're a little fast, they're a little harsh, so maybe I slow it down. Put the duration at about 50, and maybe we see you know two words at a time. So we change the in spread to two. There you go. It's a little extreme, but you get the idea. Um, all right, well, that's all I got for you. I hope it wasn't too long, and I hope I've given you the tools so you can go in here and feel comfortable playing around with the parameters we didn't cover in the custom text effect. And be sure to like and subscribe and comment all you want, and I'll be able to make a few more of these tutorials for you. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I almost forgot. This is the shameless plug section of the video. So I guess I should mention, head over to breadeffects.com where you can get free plugins, effects, and lots of tools to make your videos even better. Thanks again.